This is the Cannondale System 6 Carbon Dura Ace. And for many years, Cannondale didn't actually have a dedicated aero race bike. But now they filled that hole in its lineup with this. And we've chosen to include it on our editor's choice list this year, but not just because it's super fast, but also because it handles brilliantly well and it's really compliant. So 2018 has been a huge year for aero bikes and aero development. So what sets the Cannondale System 6 apart? That's a, that's a good question. Um, I mean, for starters, this is Cannondale's first dedicated aero race bike, which yeah. is really exciting in its own right. Um, but it's also the fact that they had a very succinct way of stating how aero this is. And they used their own uh, Super 6, which we love, and it is in our editor's choice list this year to help compare the two bikes. Um, and basically they said that a rider could ride the System 6 and they could ride the Super 6. And up to a 6% gradient, the bikes would be completely comparable. Right. Neither would have an advantage, which is quite strange because you think there's a big weight difference between yeah. the two. But actually, up until that gradient, this, the aerodynamics of the System 6 will keep it level with the Super 6. Um, and 6% is like not a me like that's a it's tough. That's a tough yeah. gradient. And I think Cannondale said that, you know, um, they used Alp Duez to help form this bike because there are large portions of that, uh, that climb which fall into that category where they could compare the two bikes, mm -hmm. um, which is super interesting, obviously, seen as the tour goes up Alp Duez very often. And there's also the fact that the lighter the rider the, um, and the better their power to weight, the steeper that gradient can go. So if you're Rigoberto Aran and this is the bike that you are riding on your pro team, then that's going to be pretty significant because his power to weight is obviously really high. Therefore, it can go steeper and still match the Super 6. Great. Which is just one way that they are saying that this bike can climb, but also they use a really good example of descending. Um, and I really like this example because I'm quite lazy. <laughs> so they said that uh, descending on the System 6 is the difference between having to put effort in on the descent and catching a rest, which is quite an interesting way of terming it yeah. because uh, obviously a lot of people do attack down des descents but me especially I quite like to catch a breather down a descent. Oh, right, yeah. okay. I'm, not meant... atta I'm not attacking down oh, okay. descents. I thought you were going to go for it right? Okay. <laughs> no so you can actually uh, basically riding the System 6 they said could be the difference between like having to storm down a descent and actually giving yourself a bit of a breath. So you could be attacking whilst catching your breath. Yeah. On the system. On six. the system six. That is a big claim. Yeah, big claim. And on the sprints as well, which is obviously the natural uh, area of the aero bike, um, this bike would finish a 200 meter sprint four bike lengths ahead of the super six. Wow, that's quite significant. Which is significant. And that's very significant for the Cannondale pro riders because up until now, they've only been able to race on the Super 6. Yeah. So if this means that we suddenly start seeing them using or bringing in some like sprinters onto their team, it would be really interesting to see how this does in a bunch of sprints. So the great thing with Cannondale in particular, they're super lucky in a sense to have the Super 6 um, as their test bike, their, their starting bike. So, you know, that is quite typically your traditional road yeah, bike, isn't it? Totally. It's, round tubed, horizontal top tube as well. You know, everything that an aero bike isn't now, because you just look at this bike and it is getting towards the realms of, you know, futuristic totally. type stuff, especially with the technology pushing aerodynamics forward. So what else has this bike got that does, you know, bring those claims to life of aerodynamics? Well, that's uh, really interesting because it does actually have, as you can tell, it looks a lot like an aero bike. Yeah, I think it was someone from Canada that spoke to me that said, if you're going to stick a bike in a wind tunnel uh, and make it aero, they're all going to come out in a similar sort yeah. of style because that's where technology has got us to and that's how aerodynamics works, yeah. uh, the current theory. So there's a lot on this frame that is making it very aerodynamic, but one of the key areas that Cannondale were particularly keen to tell us about is this bit here called a chine, which is this little bridge here from the fork onto the down tube. 
doesn't look that mm. important, right? It just looks quite aesthetically pleasing. But actually, this is really key in reattaching the air from the fork onto the down tube because the last thing that you want when you ride an aero bike is for the air to detach itself from the bike because that's when you create drag. Right. Um, so you want it to reattach as quickly as possible onto the frame. And that's what this little bit here does. Now, obviously, there's one on the other side as well. So the air is neatly reattached to the frame, which is then this is this kind of like squared shape, mm -hmm. the top tube, which again helps the wind stay attached to it. And then at the back, you've got the kind of typical aero traits of a bike. You've got the drop seat stays and you've got the real harsh angular seat tube. Um, again, all making it fast through the air. So there's been quite a lot of talk about pros, but this isn't actually the top of the range model, is it? So for the everyday man, what do these numbers mean? So I think it's, it's quite easy to get bamboozled a little bit by aero numbers. Mm. I certainly do. Um, but it's, the savings for the everyday rider are not inconsiderable on the System 6. Effectively, if you're riding at 30 miles an hour, you are, the System 6 sorry, will save you 10% of your effort, really. And I think a 10% reduction in effort is something that we'd all seek for when we're riding our bikes. At any given moment. Yeah, At any given much. moment, exactly. Yeah. And if you're drafting on this bike, so if you're riding in a group and you're riding at uh, 30 miles an hour, um, it's a saving you 30 watts, effectively. Okay. So on those big rides, when you're out with a lot of mates, this is actually doing you a lot of favours. All round. All round, yeah. yeah. It's a good all round aero bike. So the latest thing in aerodynamics and aero bikes is people talking about the complete system. So what is the System 6 doing outside of the frame realm to keep your bike nice and fast? Well, it's actually doing quite a lot. Um, and in particular, it's focused a lot on the, the wheel and the tyre or the rim and the tyre combination and where they meet. Um, and eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed that they look a little bit strange because the wheel rim on these not 64 wheels is a lot wider okay. than the tyre profile. Um, but that's for very good reason because I questioned this at the launch because everything that we've been told um, about aero bikes recently is that you want a flush interface between tyre and wheel rim effectively. And Zip are a big advocate of that, right? Exactly. And the wider the rim, then the wider the tyre should be, as long as they don't mushroom or they, and they sit flush. Um, and in fact, this is kind of the reverse because it's not the tyre that's mushrooming out over the rim, it's the rim that is then coming in and the tyre is smaller than that. But that's for really good reason. And Cannondale said that actually, especially on the front, which is obviously the leading edge, uh, the wind hits the tyre and then because uh, the rim is wider than the tyre, the air reattaches really quickly to the rim, whereas if they were flush, the air wouldn't reattach itself so well, and that's when you create drag. Okay. Um, and this leads in nicely to what we mentioned about the chine on the frame, is that so the, the wind hits the, uh, the tyre, it reattaches itself to the rim, and then that reattaches itself to the front of the frame, and it kind of works in like a nice system like that to keep yeah. it stuck to the bike. Okay. Um, which is all things that make it aerodynamically quick. Yes, you have to get a little bit used to the fact that the rim is wider than the tyre because when you're looking down over the bars, it does look a little bit weird because you automatically feel, even though you're never leaning into corners this much, you feel like, you're like your rim is going to make contact <laughs> yeah. first with the road than the tyre would. But in reality, no one's getting that low when they go around corners and yeah. the contact patch of the tyre is big enough to cover it off. If you're getting that low, oh. that you're... You're getting your knee down. Which... Formula One driver, your Moto <laughs> GP, basically, which I'm definitely not. Um, That's another point with the wheels is that if you haven't seen already, that there's actually 23 millimeter tires, front and rear, on here. Again, kind of going against the grain of what everyone else has been told and doing, and going wider with their tires. Exactly. Um, so we'll, I'll start by saying that Canada will actually say you can run this bike with a 23, a 25, or a 28. Um, but before you go throwing your 25mm tyres in, it's worth mentioning that the not 64 wheels that the bike uses actually has a 21mm internal rim width. Which is wide. Which is super wide. Yeah. That's on a level with Zip um, and so some of the widest on the market really. So these 23s are actually measure up to be a 26mm tyre. Wow, okay. So it might look weird that the rim's there, but they're not skinny. 
in by any means they're blown out pretty wide yeah so if you threw a 28 uh, sorry a 25 on there you could be looking at like riding a 28 or a 29 right. mil diameter on the tire so it's worth bearing that in mind before you swap the tires out yeah um, but actually sticking on the not 64 rims if I had to pick my standout feature of this bike it would be these wheels right Definitely. These wheels are brand new from Cannondale. They're the, they were launched with this bike. And as you might guess, they're 64 millimeters deep. Um, so that puts them on a par with uh, Roval. So Roval have a pair of 64s. And these wheels, Cannondale say, are faster than those Roval wheels. Wow. But, you know, it's kind of not really about the speed. It's also about the ride quality of them. And they're just super stiff. And uh, they're great to ride on and you can feel them just kind of pushing the bike along um, and I've just been super impressed by them. And so Cannondale are the makers of these wheels as well? Yes, aren't they? they are. So this is all coming out of Cannondale's own home effectively. It, they're designed in junction with the System 6 um, and they're really, really good. So a big question that I need to ask and being a lover of the Cannondale Super 6 and its handling credentials, how much of that is transferred over to the System 6? Oh, so much. You can totally tell that these bikes share a DNA. Um, so before I get into ride feel, it's worth mentioning that the actual, the geometry numbers that you would care about mm. on for handling of a bike, between the Super 6 and the System 6, the System 6 is only ever out by like a couple of mil. Okay. Um, so they're pretty much on the dot comparable, which is obviously going to replicate that amazing ride feel when you're descending. Yeah. Um, and for an aero bike, that's, it was, it's really interesting because for a long time aero bikes were kind of given a bit of space that people would be like, oh, it doesn't handle so well, but at least it's really aerodynamic. Yeah. Um, that was a compromise. That, that was, was a compromise, right? Go, right, okay. I yeah. can take that. Aero bikes were always associated with compromise, but that doesn't really exist anymore, or it shouldn't exist mm. because Bikes like the System 6 are proving that you can do it all. So the Cannondale System 6 does weigh about 7.8 kilos, which is a bit heavier than some of the other aero bikes that have been launched this summer. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that comes from those deep wheels and those like complex frame shapes. But as we've already mentioned, that, that weight is can kind of be like nullified a little bit by the fact that you're getting a big aero benefit even when climbing. So it's kind of a trade-off between weight and aerodynamics that there always is. Um, but it's below eight kilos, which like not that long ago, aero bikes were pushing well above that anyway. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's not too bad. So where does this bike in particular sit in the Cannondale System 6 range? So this is three bikes below the top of the range. So there's the top of the range, uh, then there's the women's version of the top of the range so yep. they're both dual race di2 high mod carbon mm -hmm. then there's an ultegra di2 high mod version and then there's this right so this is uh 4999 pounds and 99 um, pence 99 pence <laughs> uh but the carbon's a bit different so this isn't high mod carbon so it's a slightly different layup to those top of the end bikes also doesn't come with the knot bar and stem that those higher end bikes come with uh, so this comes with a Vision uh, front end kit, basically. So it's an aero handlebar, which is really nice, actually. I've quite enjoyed riding with yeah. it. And the cables are still rooted internally, so you're not losing out there. The stem is not going to be as aerodynamic as the knot stem. Yeah. Um, and the cables do kind of come out of it, as you can see. Yeah. But they are then rooted internally under here um, in the front, which is nice and stiff. It's kind of an overbuilt front end. Okay. And it uses split spacers, and I hear everybody cheer because anybody that's ever tried to change the stack height of an aero bike without split spacers leaves you wanting to hit your head against a wall. So this yeah. is super easy. You just whip the stem off, and then the spacers come apart, and like no faff whatsoever, which is really nice. Great. Yeah. And what else are you not getting on here that you would get for more money if you go higher up? So there is quite a significant uh, omission, which is a power meter. So. The high mod versions of this bike come with a power to max power meter built into the crank. So that's kind of following that trend that we're seeing nowadays of getting a power meter as standard on a high end bike, yeah. which is nice. But Cannondale do it slightly differently where you have to pay extra to get it activated. So basically they've gone, we want to give you the option of having power, 
but we don't want it to like be out of reach. It's not going to cost you more money. You can pay that at a later date to activate the power meter. So you might be thinking, oh, I'm a bit new to cycling and a power meter is a bit much. You don't need to get it activated. And then maybe a couple of months down the line, you're thinking, actually, I want to take this to the next level. Yeah. Activate that power meter. That's good, yeah. So that doesn't come on this bike, but you do get Cannondale's spide ring and SI cranks as well. So, Which um, are lightweight, super stiff, yeah. you know, one of the better cranks on the market. Absolutely, yeah. So that's the Cannondale System 6 Carbon Jura Ace, a brilliantly handling, very compliant aero bike that's brand new for the brand and that's why I've picked it to be on our editor's choice list this year.